Alright guys, what's going on? This is a uh, bit of an impromptu video. This is my pair of what I use as monitors. Um, they're actually bookshelf speakers, I use them as a near field monitor kind of things. They're my reference speakers. I've had them for bloody years and I exactly know what they sound like. Um, so, these are acoustic solutions, as you can see there. Not usually reputable as one of the best brands going, but these are actually quite decent speakers. A lot of people use them and um, they're quite sought after when they do come up. They are 60 watts long term power, they are 65 to 20 kHz response, and they are rated at 8 ohms impedance. Now they've both got these crossovers with the two sets of inputs. Now only the bottom one has ever actually worked on them. The top one has never ever worked in the entire time I've got them. If I remember rightly it's not even hooked up, I think I opened them at one point to have a brief look when I got them many years ago. Um, they were actually in a pub I believe before, um, something like that, I don't know, I picked them up from uh, a car boot sale. So they had wall brackets on them which I took off. And I can see they're quite a bit dusty as well. Anyway, uh, I've actually started to realise a while ago that they sounded quite different to one another in terms of one seems to have a lot more bottom end on it than the other and the other one seems quite lacking in it so I'm not sure which one's off or not there's actually another two of them but I have somewhere which the tweeters are blowing in both of them um, not sure where they are at the minute I was going to use one of them to test and compare but obviously I can't do that if I can't find them so this here is an amp I recently purchased it's a Samsung Servo 300 uh, that was quite cheap so I bought that to try them with that beforehand I had been using this Samsung Servo 170 which is here this will soon be being used for my JBL Control 1 near field monitor speakers I've also tried a couple of these amps under here some of them are obviously way too powerful at like 2000 watts um, and they've always been the same but I've never had the time to sit and look at them and take them apart which I'm about to do so I'll show you the problem first of all the current setup here because I've not got a lot and I'm also missing a desk which has just been taken out but I've got them on top of a flight case I've just got the servo 300 here I've got the two monitors or speakers there. Down here there's a Behringer desk. It's an N Zen NYX one two oh four USB, yeah. And that's got XLRs coming out going to the jack ins on the amp. We've got a USB connection here, which is going up to my laptop, which is running VLC with some music on there. So if I play this song through both speakers now I'm not sure what it's going to sound like on the phone anyway but if I drop out the left I'm going to rewind it and I'm going to have just the left hand side on now probably tell there's a lot of bottom end missing now. So if I switch them over again. Both of them again. Let me stop that. So you can get an idea for how different they're sounding. And um, I want to resolve this problem and have them both sound the same. So what I'm going to do 
is crack probably this one open first and we'll have a quick look at what's inside them. I can't remember for the life of me what they actually are like inside. So let's open up and see. Okay, got the screws out, let's whack this out. Hopefully there's nothing attached to it that's going to drop off. Oh, hello there. We've got the sponge that's stopping the wires coming out. There we go. Alright. As I thought, yep, those top terminals are not hooked up at all. This is the kind of stuff we've got in here. Nothing looks like it's blown or gone. Really what I need to do is take the pair of them out before we actually do anything here. So I'm going to pop out the crossover in this one now. Here comes crossover number two. Oh, this one's a tight one. I think the other one is definitely the one I had out because this one doesn't seem to want to budge. Perhaps this is glued. Yes, I would say it's glued there. So, that one doesn't look like it's ever been glued. I think I'm going to have to prise this off, so let me get a flat blade. Okay, I've got a flat blade screwdriver. We're going to try and prise this out. Oh, there we go. There's a very small touch of glue on it, which has actually come over from gluing inside, so it's not actually glued in. It was just holding it a little tighter. Anyway. The wiring seems to be wrapped around a lot more in this one. Like it's been twisted. Let's turn that over. I'm going to turn the amplifier off as well. Alright, well, upon a little bit more inspection, I'm actually checking the colouring of the wiring. We can see here, quite hard to see with the light on, but these wires are white and these two are brown. Uh, grey, sorry. These two are grey and these two are white. Both whites are going to there, which that terminal is the negative of the speaker input. On this one, we've got two whites here and two greys here. So there's a grey and a white going to the negative input. Okay, so if we look in here, we can see that this wire here is the horn. Now this is wired the same on both of them. Now this one is lacking the bottom end, but the driver at the bottom is out of phase. Now I don't think that the wire colours are changed inside, but we'll soon see. There we go. We can see the negative on the speaker is white and positive is grey. Let's check this one. Negative on the speaker is white and positive is grey. So, our driver here is out of phase. So I'm going to get the soldering iron out and flip this around. Whilst waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, I've just been looking on the internet. And I can see here on eBay, the crossover input unit that's been sold. And the wiring on that is both white wires come to this negative point on the crossover. There's also one other for sale, which is this one, it's a woofer and the crossover. And both wires, white, go to that joint. So, we need to flip it around. Okay, I've just soldered the uh, crossover wire in. So we've now got it running as it should be, really. So both whites are going to that point, on both of them. And uh, now it's time to try them. So I'm going to stick a screw in them and turn them around and give them a try. Okay, so now it's kind of the moment of truth where we see what's happened with them. The one on the left is the one that I haven't changed the phase of. The one on the right is the one that was out of phase, I believe, and I've put back now. So we're going to play some uh, sound and see what happens. Let's try the one that we haven't changed first. the one on the right. Seems to 
be lacking top end. The bottom end is definitely very close on them though. I'm just thinking maybe this track has got the uh, certain instruments that pan to one side mostly, so I'm going to try and sum it to a mono track and play it back using Audacity now. Okay, I've got it open here in Audacity. I'm going to select it, go to Tracks, Stereo Track to Mono. That gives us one mono sum of it. So now it's the same coming out of both channels. Let's try the speakers again. Left. On the right. That sounds a lot closer now. Let's try this again. That's the one we've changed the phase of. No, we haven't. Try them both together. Okay, they seem to be cancelling each other out together. Which is kind of strange. Okay, I've just put the track back to stereo, put just the left channel, and then set that to a mono, so it's not summed anymore. So let's try that now and see what happens. Huh, it still seems to do it. That's just the left. Just the right. Both of them. Something's definitely not right here. I need to investigate further. This has actually been a while now since I've been tweaking these and trying things. Uh, I've spent well, most of last night and this morning messing with them. But I finally got them to be equal with each other. So what I've got over here is a mono summed version of the track I've been using. It's going into that Behringer desk and then into this amp. And I'm going to play it. both channels. Maybe turn the right off. Let's try just the right. go they're working good then I'll bob on with one another I'm gonna play some other music through them quickly and uh, I'll try them something that's stereo this time okay here is the same track but without it being mono summed
So that's working good. Uh, I believe the backs are still out of them, and both the crossovers are actually still out of them, so that's why they were lacking base end. But we can see there that they are both still wired the same way internally. Presumably. Uh, but what I've done is the one that was out of phase, as in that the base driver was out of phase on, was this one, and the horn was the right way around. Now I corrected this, if you remember, to be the same as this one, so it was in phase. But actually that put the base driver out of phase. So to fix this, I switched the base driver back around, so it's out of phase in here. And the horn is also out of phase. So both the horn and base driver are what would be out of phase on this one. And they're both what would be in phase on this one. However, it actually makes them both be in phase and sound identical. So jobs are good in there. I'm going to screw these in very quickly and try them. Alright, back to screwed in. I've got a mono sum here. I'm going to play that. Just the left. Just the right. Both together. That. Let's try it in stereo now. So that's good. They sound the same and they are in phase, not cancelling each other out. Uh, I'll try one last thing. Okay, this last one is from uh, a CD album that I've mixed down, which is from a, a pub gig, and I'm going to play that through it. It's got a mixture of instruments like bass, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, etc. Also, my battery's dying, which is why I've got no light. So that's that anyway. I guess thanks for watching this video. It's been a bit of a an interesting one and kind of frustrating at times, but hey, got there in the end. So please leave a like if you liked it, found it interesting, helpful in any way. Leave a comment down below if you've got similar speakers. Tell me what you think of these speakers if you've got some, because I like them personally. And uh, subscribe for more techie videos and random things like this. Thanks for watching.